crafters, this is Lisa with Fun Stuff Crafts and another Inspiration Friday project. If you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping by and make sure to hit the subscribe button below for more inspiration videos. And if you click on the bell, YouTube should alert you when I upload a new video. If you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find those links down below in the description. This week's Inspiration Friday project is all about infusible ink and HTB and what to choose. So for today's project, we are talking about the difference between infusible ink and heat transfer vinyl. So as I said in my blog post, the first thing you want to determine is what is your project? So for today's project, I want to hop over to one of my favorite sites to pick up um, free SVGs, and that is Love SVG. And what I thought I would do is I'm going to make myself a shirt and a little drawstring ba bag. So I found this really cute SVG out here that I thought would be a fun one for us to do. So created to create. So let's take, let's walk through the steps of downloading a design and uploading it to Design Space. We haven't done that in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the image that I want. And this site does offer free SVGs if you're using them for your own um, personal use, which in this case I'm going to. But what I also like about this site is if you scroll down they will tell you what the cost is if you want to use it for a commercial license. So they've got some great options here. Um, if you just want one image, if you want to buy your images, you know, one at a time, it's $2. Um, you can do a yearly access or a lifetime access. For the most part, um, up until recently, I've been doing everything for my own personal use. So I am um, starting to create some things for sale. Um, down the road here I'm going to be doing that and so I will be buying the commercial license at that time But for today we are just going to go ahead and pull this down because this is for my own personal use So now I'm on a Mac Airbook and so to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on download and You will see you may not have seen but it flashed over and it went to my download folder so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hop over to Design Space. I am going to open up a new project and I am going to go to Upload. So when I go to Upload, I am going to say Upload the Image. I'm going to browse to where that is on my computer and now I know it's going to be on my downloads. Now, a this is on my Mac remember and so when you look at it depending on the type of computer you have it is normally going to bring down four files for you so it's got a .dxf, a .eps, a .png, and a .svg. SVG is the file we want and as a reminder .svg is a cut file for your Cricut machine it also works for your silhouettes too. The thing I like about bringing it in as an SVG is everything is done for me. You can see the blue and white checker box in the back is showing where it's going to be blank and my file is only going to be the created to create. Now I can add a name to this if I want to change it. It's defaulting in the one that Love SVG had and I can also put some tags on there. But I'm going to go ahead and just save it as it is. And then all we need to do is click on it and we are going to insert it to our project. So right now there is no difference between the infusible ink and the um, heat transfer vinyl. What I'm going to do for this project is for the heat transfer vinyl, the black here, I'm going to use as black on my little tote bag. But I am going to cut out the, these um, brown pieces as gold glitter. Now, there is not a glitter option or a shimmery option in the um, infusible ink. 
infusible ink has some set um, infusible ink um, patterns that you can purchase through Cricut um, and they keep adding to them. It's always fun to go into the local stores and see what they've added. But for in the, for this project, I'm going to do one that is with um, the two colors and then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this and I am going to change the second one to be all one color. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. What I find to be the easiest is if I go up to color sync and I can just grab the brown and bring it up to the black. Now what happened here, if you guys noticed, is it turned both of my projects that way and that's not what I wanted, okay? So you wanna make sure what happened is it's showing both projects here. You can see I've got four of the little flourishes, I guess I would call it. So I am just going to pull those up individually and hopefully I'll grab the ones that, there we are. So now I have one project and this is my first project is going to be my heat transfer vinyl project. It's all going to be cut as one and my second one is going to be my heat transfer vinyl. Hope I said that right. Infusible ink, heat transfer vinyl. So what I want to do is when we go over to the machine, I will show you how we load these a little bit differently. So when I select my options, I'm going to select this one to be infusible ink sheets. And then when this gun gets ready to print, I'm going to select the heat transfer vinyl. Both of these designs are going to be cut out in a mirror image. So that's really important to remember. Um, you do load the machines differently and we'll work on that. So right now what I want to do is I want to size what my image should, um, my size wise should be. So for my cute little drawstring tote bag I have, I have determined that I can do that one in a um, six. I'm going to do a width of six and I'm going to let it justify itself. So it's going to be a six by almost five is what my design is going to be. Now for my other one, I am not quite sure what size I want. And I just want to remind you guys of this little template that's out here that's always a good one to use. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the template um, for my shirt. Now you definitely could just take the time to, to measure out your shirt. But I'm going to go ahead and just grab the template. And right now I've got one of Cricut's um, t-shirts that is a v-neck. So I'm just scrolling down. There's the scoop neck shirt. But I want to go ahead and grab the v-neck. And I must have missed it. There it is. I've got a v-neck shirt. And I have it in a extra large. So what I want to do is size the design to the shirt. Now I can see right here I have grabbed the wrong design. This is my heat transfer um, vinyl design. Keeping in mind that's my two color design. And so we'll need to move that over to the side. And let's grab the design that we're going to use for the heat transfer vinyl, which is my all one color design. And we're going to go ahead and size it. Um, based on what it looks like on the shirt. Now you definitely could go size with a tape measure. I just really like to use um, this method. And so let me get the other one adjusted back to the size that I wanted. And we will get ready to work with these designs. Now keep in mind, I have my designs together. I've got both of them and I am going to hit the make it button and I want to show you what happened and you will see I have got an issue right there with the make it because it has mixed my designs and I did that on purpose for you guys because I really want you guys to see that um, you need to do these separately so there's a couple ways you can do it and I'm gonna do one at a time so it will be a little bit easier to follow so what I like to do in that case is, let's go ahead and do our heat transfer vinyl first. I am going to highlight this image right here, and I am going to put the eyeball on, and it's going to close it out. 
okay? So by closing it out, that means it's not gonna show on my canvas um, when I go to print. The other thing I want to do is I want to attach my items here because I want when them to they go over to the mat, I want them all to be together, okay? So we've hidden one of the designs over here and the other one we have attached, okay? So now watch when I go to make it, everything is like I want it to be with one exception. What did I remind you guys of? This needs to be a mirror image. So we're gonna fl click on mirror image and then we're going to hit continue. And once the machine um, finds my maker, which it's doing right now, I am going to select my material. Now the material I'm going to choose is the infusible ink sheets. And those are um, set up in my favorites. So it's the first time I've got into the program today, so it's a little slow, but here we go. So you can see uh, these are the products that I use the most. So I've just clicked on um, for them to be in my favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and click on infusible ink transfer sheet. And it, it right here, make sure mirror is turned on and the material is ink side up. That's exactly what we're going to do when we go over to the machine. And I'll show you that. The other thing you can double check here is you know that your mirror is on. I don't know how many times I have cut the wrong way. I even did it yesterday when I was working on some coasters. So please take the time to double check and read what the um, program is telling you. Design Space is very smart and it's trying to tell us what we need to know. We're not going to put anything in clamp A. We're going to use our fine point blade in clamp B and then we are going to press the load button. So I'm going to hop over to the machine and I'm going to show you the view on how we load the infusible ink onto our mat. So we're over at our machine and what we want to do is we want to load our mat. Now loading of the mat is a little bit different with the um, infusible ink and so we're going to go step by step through it. But first I want to show you which one I decided to use. So I went through my sash and I've got a bunch of different infusible ink vinyl but I thought this black one with the little flowers was really um, um, cute. And the Cricut does a great job of showing you that you know it's not as vibrant on um, on the sheet trying to say um, as when you do the transfer so if you guys can see this does not look very vibrant it's going to come out like this now I will tell you Cricut really encourages you to use their um, infusible incompatible blanks and so Michael's had a sale I think around Christmas time so I picked up um, a few different blanks in fact next week I'm going to be doing one on a um, tote bag but for now, we're going to be doing this shirt, and we are going to be using one of Cricut's. Now, I have had success on using other um, shirt blanks um, that I picked up at Walmart, but I had to make sure that they were 100% polyester. That is the key, the polyester. So let's go ahead and get this loaded. Now, with the infusible ink, what you want to do is you want to do the ink side up. Now this design, it really doesn't matter what direction I'm going. And so I am just going to lay it on. Now I've cut my paper to be the size that, um, that I need. And I've seen on lots of different posts of not to touch the vinyl. I have been having great success with adhering my transfer paper down. And I use my scraper for it. What I have found is if I don't do that step, my paper starts to bundle up and I have a jam on my machine. So I strongly encourage you guys to take that step with, um, with your infusible ink. Now I'm gonna go ahead and load my machine and I noticed I was cutting wood last time so I'm gonna adjust my little feet there. I am going to go ahead and place it. Remember, it's ink side up. We're going to do the heat transfer vinyl a little bit different. But I'm going to go ahead and load it. My machine's asking for the load. I made sure that I've got my mirror image on. 
just double check in there my mirror image is on and I'm gonna hit the go button so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this section while it does its cutting and then I'll join you back when we're ready to unload our mat and I'm gonna go ahead and push my machine back out of the way I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna weed the heat transfer vinyl, excuse me, the infusible ink, and then we're gonna load our heat transfer vinyl and weed it, and then we'll do all the heat press at the same time. So I still like to unload mine upside down. I'm gonna put my mat off to the side. Now the difference on um, weeding this is, one, I don't use my pen pen right away, and I wanna get this close so you guys can see it and hopefully hear it. It kind of cracks. And so what we want to do is you are pulling it away. And so just be really careful. Um, as you do that, you wanna see where your designs were. And it usually pulls very nicely. And sometimes you just need to find where the crack is. And then it, it, it definitely weeds different than your heat transfer vinyl weeds. I'll go ahead and just keep doing this. And I'm just breaking pieces off at a time. And if a piece starts to come up that you know needs to stay down, I just push it right back down. But this is a bigger design, so even those insides of the E's and the A's, I literally am just popping and pulling out those centers. So, really weeding very nicely. I just bend it to pop it up. And a couple of these are not sticking down or initially, and so I'm just re-pushing them down. This has got a built-in transfer um, paper, just like your heat transfer does. You see, again, I'm just popping that. Now, you could save these pieces you're taking out. Um, although they're very small in some cases, but these are still good pieces of ink. I haven't been reusing mine or using mine at all, but you definitely could, especially if you have like a big center you're taking out um, and, and using it. And just like in regular um, weeding, you want to make sure you get all the spots. Sometimes I like to turn mine back around. What I've been noticing lately is this little film has been staying on some of mine. I hope you guys can see that. And that is just fine. So sometimes I like to turn mine backwards and see to make sure that it definitely, the glare is there a little bit that I've got all my weeding done. So I see my weeding is all done. I'm gonna put this one off to the side. I'm gonna pick up my mess and we are going to hop back over to Design Space and we're gonna set ourselves up for our heat transfer vinyl mat loading. Okay, so we're back over at Design Space and remember this is the one we just printed. So now what I want to do is, this is the one that we want to hide now, and the one over here I want to unhide. So I'm gonna go ahead and unhide that one, and I am going to hide this other one. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna click Make It. Now this one again, I forgot to attach it together. So we're gonna go back over, and we are going to highlight it all together. 
and we are going to now if I attach I want to show you guys what happens if I attach it it all goes to one color which I don't want so I'm gonna dis detach it um, and I'm gonna do my an undo button okay what I want to do and let's go ahead and make this so you guys can see this a little bit better um, lost my design for you apologize for that what I'm gonna do is I just want to grab my two creates so I'm gonna hit my here in my design I'm gonna hit my um, create my shift key and my create and then I'm gonna hit my two, O and my two so basically I'm picking up the black items and I'm going to weld them together and then my gold items I'm also going to weld together now you'll see why I did that you can do that if you have a like colors so I'm gonna go ahead and do make and now you will see the design is exactly like I want it to be it's much easier once I go to start weeding and same with the gold okay so now the other thing remember mirror image and I like to do them both at the same time so I don't forget and then we're going to go over here to continue um, and it is looking for my machine again and this time we are going to select glitter iron on now whenever I do glitter iron on I always like to do more pressure just seems to have better success with my machine so again it's saying make sure that the mirror is on and the bonded side is up on the mat and you'll see what we mean by that okay so we've got mirror on here and we've got mirror on here so we're going to go ahead and hop back over to our machine and we're going to load our mat and then we're going to cut our two designs so we are back at the mat and we are going to get ready to load our HDB. Now I did decide instead of doing the black and the gold that we talked about, I went through my stash and I found these really pretty teal and pink glitter um, iron on. So that's what I'm going to use. So I always like to size mine. I know I did the sizing on the heat transfer vinyl off camera, but I thought I could do that. We could do that together here. So I need about an eight by eight um, sheet of the blue. And so I love to use my Cricut mat. That's why I always have this small mat um, right next to my machine and my long ruler. Um, I really love to use that. All of the items that I like to use with um, my crafting, I have created my Amazon Fun Seth Crafts All Crafting Shopping List. Um, it is linked down below on the video. I would encourage you guys to check that out um, and you'll see links. Um, they are affiliate links um, and anytime those are used, I could earn a small commission. Doesn't cost anything more to you guys, but it definitely helps support my channel. So when we are loading heat transfer vinyl, this is the transfer sheet. It's kind of hard to see, but what I always think about the front. So the front's going to go down. And so I, again, like to make sure that my material is adhered very well to my mat. And I just like this scraper. I've got the Cricut scrapers too. This one I picked up and it just works really nice too. So they're really interchangeable. So again, I got that on really nice and tight. I am going to pull my machine out 10 inches. Remember, I always tell you guys that. You guys may wonder why I put this in my machine all the time. I broke my hinge on my machine somehow. So that's just my little way to make sure I keep my, my lid up. So I'm gonna go ahead and load it. We're gonna let this one do its cutting and then I'm gonna load the pink for the other color and then we'll weed these um, together and show you just a little bit different how you weed the heat transfer vinyl versus the infusible ink. We're all ready to go now, so let's go ahead and move our machine back. And 
let's read some HTV. So whenever I do my heat transfer vinyl, I always use my trusty um, pin pen weeding tool. Now I picked this up at 651 um, vinyl and this is where I get almost all of my heat transfer vinyl and my regular vinyl. Um, definitely have links on Amazon um, for vinyl too, um, but whenever I have to buy bulk vinyl, I love to go to 651. So with the pin pin, the, the um, weeding of the vinyl is just as easy as this. Voila, we've got one piece done. And sometimes it's hard to see in the light. I like to trim down my vinyl if I can. Um, this one could have been trimmed a little bit more before I actually cut it. But I always save all of my scraps of vinyl so I can see. And again, I use my pin pin. I definitely have other weeding tools and I've tried all different ones, but this pin pin is just the absolute best when it comes to weeding vinyl. Excuse me, heat transfer vinyl. Well, it works great with vinyl too, but it really just picks it all right up. I like the heat transfer vinyl working with it too. Um, it doesn't come up and I don't usually lose letters, you know, as I'm doing the, the, um, the weeding portion of all of this. So as a reminder, you know, this is all about what's the difference between heat transfer vinyl and infusible ink. They both have their purposes. I use them both. Um, it's what is your project. And in this case, this project that I'm working on right here, I wanted a little bit of glitter. I wanted that, you know, splash of, of um, um, shimmer to my bag that I'm doing. And so I chose to do HTV. Um, now, the other thing to keep in mind is heat transfer vinyl works on so many different products, um, including wood. I've done it on some of my tumblers before. I've done it on, you know, wood signs. Um, different things. It also works great on dark colors, whereas the infusible ink, it's never going to peel. It's never going to crack. You don't need to worry about it in the washing machine, but it only works on light colored um, products. Now, I have been doing lots of coasters with the infusible ink, which I absolutely love, um, and I have another um, blog post on making the coasters and got that link down below too. So really what it is is what is your product um, that you um, are making? So I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but that just is weeded really nice. So I've got my two products all weeded, all ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our camera angle a little bit. I'm going to go over to my um, Easy press station, and we are going to put both of these onto our um, products, and we're going to be ready to go. So, give me a second, we'll change the camera angle. Okay, so we moved over to my heat press station, and what we have now is I want to show you just a quick overview of what you need for each type of material. So, um, for the HTV we are going to be using the transfer and the product. And I do have a Teflon sheet that I always like to use also. So we're gonna do that one second. So I'm gonna put that off to the side. The first one we're gonna do is we are going to do the um, infusible ink. And so I've got my product I'm gonna be using, which is the extra large t-shirt. I do have my mat that I'm going to be using, my Easy Press mat, a piece of cardstock. And the cardstock helps um, stop the ink from bleeding through. Um, each one of your infusible inks comes with some butcher paper. So we're going to use that. And then, of course, we've got our design. So what we're going to start out with is we're going to go ahead and open up the package. Now, one big difference with infusible ink is you do not need to pre-wash your shirt. 
That is always something that I do with other heat transfer, um, uh, or for the heat transfer vinyl when I'm putting that onto a shirt. In this case, we are not going to be um, doing that at all. One of the things that Cricut definitely recommends though is that you do preheat your material and that we use a lint brush to clean um, our design. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my shirt out like I like it. And I am going to go and grab a lint brush. Okay, so the, I've got grabbed my lint brush. Don't know why I forgot to grab that. But what you want to do is you want to go ahead and run it over um, the your shirt. Now, I know I just took this out of the package, but I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is a lot of hair that came off on this shirt. And whenever you use an infusible ink, for that matter, heat transfer vinyl, um, you don't want hair on your shirt. I have puppies in my house, so I'll tell you, I got hair all over the place. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I am going to line this up kind of like right where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and put my cardstock, and your cardstock goes inside your shirt. And what that's doing is this infusible ink we're going to face down, and so it is going to protect so that ink doesn't bleed through onto the back of your shirt. So really important you do that. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to put in our design. And... I still, just like with the HTV, I still like to fold mine in half and kind of get the center. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of eyeball it about right there. Don't know if you guys noticed when I cut this, I went off a little bit. And so I actually cut little tiny pieces to take the place of where it went off my board. And what I like to do for that is I have some of the infusible ink. Excuse me, infusible ink. Where is that coming from? Um, I've got some of the heat transfer tape. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to put a piece of that on so this does not move. And that way I will have the end of my C. And then you can see down here on my A and my T, the bottom part of that also um, cut off a little bit. So I just took some of my scraps and I, these pieces are so small. Um, I took some of my scraps so that I could fill those in. Like I say, they're super small. But this is where you could also use tweezers to get them in the right spot. And I am just going to to move those around just a little bit. Get them right where I want them. <laughs> that one's being good. This T end is just so small. put it on the tape and then bring it in there. You know what, I'm gonna cut that piece of tape and so I can do that one just a little bit separate. So I've got that one in. So, that's my protectors, you guys, sorry about that. Okay, so my design is ready to go. So. Next thing I want to do is I want to put my butcher paper on. Now I've already heated my heat press up and I used the Easy Press Guide 360 degrees for 120 minutes. I have my Easy Press Guide as a favorite on my computer, so I always have it there. The other thing that I like to remember is you don't want the design to be bigger than your Easy Press. 
Um, so depending on the size of your easy press, you want to make sure you're designed. Because with the infusible ink, not like with the HDD, you don't want to move your design around. So we want to make sure that we get it totally on. We also want to put it down with just some light pressure. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. One thing you guys I just realized I didn't do, and I should tell you, I'm, I'm not going to go back and do it now, is Cricut does recommend that you preheat the fabric. And that was a step that I missed. I was so worried about getting those pieces that I missed in that I didn't get that part done. So make sure that you do preheat your material. Okay, so my timer has went off. I'm going to go ahead and raise it straight up. And then I'm going to take off my butcher paper. And let's see what our design looks like. Well, I can tell the piece that I hooked on did not transfer, so we'll have to fix that over on this side. But other than that, my shirt is complete, and I will fix that little piece um, in a minute, but I just want to take out the sheet, and I want to show you guys how nice that is. It is infused. It is all absolutely beautiful. It is bright colors, just like what the box showed um, that it was supposed to look like. So that is with the infusible ink. Now let's move over and let's do our um, heat transfer vinyl and show you the difference on doing that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the heat transfer vinyl one. Now, I want to do this all in one press. And if you guys remember when we cut this out, this um, is all on one sheet of the transfer paper. And then I've got this. So what I'm going to do, because I want it to stay proportioned like I have it, I'm just going to cut out a hole here, basically, of the transfer sheet so that I can put in my little pink pieces and that way I can press it all at once not to say you couldn't do it in two presses you absolutely could but if you don't have to it saves a little bit of time now I have already went over to my easy press guide online and I have found out that I need to be at 270 degrees for my cute little canvas bag I'm gonna be doing here and 30 seconds so a um, lot less temperature, and the other piece of it is, is that it's a lot less time. So while it's heating up, I'm still just going to use it even though it's heating up, and I'm going to warm up my bag, plus I'm going to get the wrinkles off of my bag. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let that happen, and then I'm just going to start to figure out where I want to put this. I just love this little saying. And I am a glitter girl. I love my glitter. And so that is one reason why I don't think I'll ever stop using um, the, the um, heat transfer vinyl. Because it is just... So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put these down underneath. Didn't quite get the paper cut totally, but it's away from the blue. And so I'm going to kind of just eyeballing that a little bit. Not quite straight, I don't think. This is a little bag that I picked up at um, one of my thrift store shoppings. Um, you know, those type of things. I just had it in my stash and it was ready to go when I need it. I actually think I'm going to move this down a little bit. Um, I think once my drawstring goes, I still want to be able to see my design. You know, when you pull the drawstring, I still want to be able to see that design. So I'm going to go ahead and I think go with it just like that. Now you can put um, the, the um, Easy Press right on here. I have picked up these um, Teflon mats. This is actually for a cookie sheet. And I just really like using 
it whenever I'm going to um, be in applying it. It's just an extra layer of precaution is really all it is. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and wait just a couple seconds here. We're almost down to temperature. I wanna make sure I'm at the correct temperature. My machine is um, still saying, um, can't see if you know if you guys can see that exactly, but 291 degrees. I need to be down to 270. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up a little bit around here while that comes down, and then I'll join you back when it's at the correct temperature. Okay, we are at 270 degrees. And so I am gonna go ahead and with this, I am going to apply some light pressure. It's only for 30 seconds. And then when I, um, my 30 seconds is up, I am going to peel back that protective um, backing on it. And then I'm going to flip my bag over. That's a little bit of a difference too between the infusible ink. I'm gonna flip the bag over and I'm gonna press for 15 seconds on the back side, which really helps the um, vinyl adhere to the bag. So we're gonna go ahead and take off my sheet here. I'm going to um, double check and see what it looks like. It's a warm peel, and so I am peeling it off. One of the reasons why there are a couple pieces that are trying to come up. That's why you're going to press it on the back side. And I'm just going to leave those two pieces on while I press the back side. And I am going to press my button and I'm just going to watch it go down to the 15 seconds. So again, this material sometimes does peel or it could if you wash it quite a bit whereas the infusible ink remember it was infused into our fabric there's no chance of it coming off so let's go ahead and for some reason i've got a spot that just does not want to It's just really, really interesting. I'm gonna let it cool for a minute. Let it cool and then we'll see how we do. And then I'll join you back for our finished product. So here we have it, two projects, one with infusible ink and the other with heat transfer vinyl. So remember, when you're deciding on your project, that's gonna determine 